Hello and welcome. Today we are in the new tier 8 French destroyer, Le Venterrier. I, I, I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm gonna call it the adventurer. Oh no, I think I can't even pronounce that. Well, I guess you guys will just have to deal with it. Or we could call it the Seclair, which is a much more reasonable thing to say. Anyway, this is the tier 8 version of the new tech tree line of French destroyers. She is basically like the Kassar and the Orage in that she is just a little bit worse than them because she is tier 8. The guns are pretty decent, although I think the Benson technically out DPMs you. However, you have a lot easier time actually hitting your shells. On top of that, um, the Benson is making a bit of a mistake in that she's... Well, not all her guns are on target, okay? And the uh, Adventurer is actually pretty speedy, especially with speed boost. She goes basically the same speed as the other ones. Her base speed is actually higher, but her speed boost is 25%. So I, I think technically uh, you would say the Adventurer is actually a faster ship. Now, we're dominating this Benson, but honestly that was just kind of poorly played by the Benson. Don't expect to dominate this hard, but you should be able to pretty favorably trade with a ship like the Benson, unless it's at extremely close range. On top of that, well, remember, these are the extremely scary torpedoes that hit like a truck. A little bit of a smaller truck than the Orage or the Kassar, but it's it's the, the, the truck is still, you know, it's it's still pretty deadly. Maybe you'll even wake up in another world when you get hit by them. The ship also has the same gimmicky torpedoes. Uh, they deal maximum damage up to 6.5 kilometers. The damage drop-off percentage on the torpedo seems to be about the same as the tier 10, so until 6.5 kilometers you deal maximum damage, and from there it starts dropping and dropping until it gets to maximum range where it's about 45% of the damage. All in all though, mostly you should treat these as just regular torpedoes. If you can get closer, get closer to Torp, but you want to kind of do that anyway, right? Because you have a much smaller chance of missing your torpedoes when you're actually really close to the target. So it really doesn't change the way you play that much. I think this is just a way to give these destroyers torpedoes that hit really, really hard without, you know, also making them like Shimakusa torpedoes that are much easier to dodge compared to these, or compared to Holland's. And I like that. I like Holland torpedoes. I like how you can actually hit them more reliably than Shima torps. Of course, these won't be as fast as the Kassar torpedoes, right? And so they won't be as easy to hit as Holland torps or the tier 9 or tier 10 ones, but it should be somewhere around there anyway, because these are still pretty swift torpedoes. You also have the same setup as on the tier 9, so you have three launchers, one triple launcher in the center, and two triple launchers on each side. The, the torp but launching angles are also excellent, so even though you might have to turn your ship, it doesn't feel that bad. The main annoyance with these kinds of triple launchers, where one is in the center but then one is on each side, is that the central one seems to often want to launch first, even though you would want to do it the other way around, right? So that can get a bit annoying, but you can actually swap between torpedo sets by pressing the C button, you know, the same as if you were changing the view on your turrets. Which actually makes me wonder, if you change the view with the C button on gun turrets, does it change which turret fires first? I'm gonna go check. Well, after testing it, no, it doesn't work. The C button does not change which gun fires first. It does work for torpedo tubes, though. Anyway, back to the ship. Basically, she is a torpedo destroyer. Without the smokescreen, but pretty fast speed, especially when the speed boost is up. The guns are okay, and overall, well, she's a pretty decent ship. I kind of like her, especially when I consider that at tier 8, a lot of torpedo destroyers, or destroyers in general, are a little odd, not the greatest. I mean, sure, there are exceptions like Akizuki and maybe Silivangi, but a lot of them, like, for example, the Benson, while the gunfire power might be decent, the torps are pretty mediocre on her. Whereas the torps in this thing are pretty good. 
you can definitely terrorize battleships with them. Especially, look, that Amagi has 60,000 HP, right? These torpedoes, if they hit that close range without the torp belt, are gonna hit for like 18, 19k damage. Like, four of them will sink that Amagi from full HP. Although realistically, the torpedo belt will come into play and then, well, it'll take a bit more than just four of them. And Amagi's torpedo belt is pretty good. Cruisers also should be very scared of this ship. Sure, they can also deal with the destroyer pretty well, but these torpedoes just hit really, really hard. This, by the way, was my very first match in the ship. I didn't actually know what all the specific numbers are because the World of Warship shipbuilder, for example, the shipbuilder tool, didn't have the stats for it. <laughs> Look, see, I hit three torpedoes and that I'm again minus 33k HP. That guy lost more than half his HP just now from one launcher. Just one launcher. <sighs> Feels good. Feels good. Probably not so good when you're on the receiving end. I would like to very much deal with this Gorizia. We haven't seen the Benson in a while, so that's a little bit of a worry. There's also the worry that the Queen Elizabeth will eventually show up. I think around the island. That's why I'm keeping this set for her. I just can't really estimate well how far she is. Did we hit the Gorizia? Come on, it has to be pretty close. No, we didn't. Maybe we'll hit the Amagi. Come on, oh, looks like it. Goodbye. Nice. And there is the Queen Elizabeth. I wish I had noticed her a little bit sooner so I could have launched the torpedoes a little bit earlier. I'm thinking of YOLO rushing her. Because, I mean, that's something you can do, and tier 6 battleships aren't exactly known for... Oh! Oh no! I guess I have no choice now. I forgot that Gorizia was here. I figured she had already left. But I guess not. 6 kilometer concealment means that your concealment's pretty good, so I'm gonna be out of uh, the detection range of the Gorizia pretty quickly. I'm just... I could sit here, but... What fun would that be? I want to YOLO this Queen Elizabeth that is running from me. Hmm. Can I actually sink her? <laughs> I think I'm going to need to use my guns quite a bit here. Okay, she she's turning, she's turning, she's turning. I think just two torpedoes will be enough. Actually, if we hit with guns a bunch, maybe only one. I'm trying to bring her four turrets to hit me which is gonna be able to do but i have a lot of hp left 6.5k and those torpedoes look nasty oh oh okay that was unexpected i figured that i would hit uh, at least two i guess i have to finish her with guns goodbye took some extra damage still by the way if you're looking at my torpedo reload few things to consider. It's not really that the uh, Adventurer's Torpedo Reload is much longer than the Tier 9 and Tier 10 one. It's that you don't have the 6th slot where you equip the minus 15% Torpedo Reload. On top of that, I was a little foolish. See, this, this is my Captain skill build, and you might notice a conspicuous lack of the uh, Torpedo Reload upgrade on the Captain. See, we had 17 points, and that wasn't enough to take all the... what I thought was critical. Right, you want the concealment, you want adrenaline rush, you want torpedo speed, you want last stand, and then you would like torpedo reload too, but for some foolish reason I took a survivability expert instead, which might have kind of paid off just now, but I really should have taken the torpedo reload captain skill. Overall though, you want the same captain skill build as on the Kassar, so you want to go for the same stuff, this one. But the main battery reload captain skill is kind of optional. That's probably the last one you want to take. Well, we won the game. I don't think there's anything they can do at this point. I mean, they might sink me, but I have thoroughly decapped them. And we're gonna finish capping in a bit. There's three ships in there. And I know that the Benson is in our cap too. Because there's a giant smoke screen shining at me. Hello, Gorizia. 
some shells. I'm surprised he hasn't actually sunk me. He should be able to... Oh, there's the Benson. You know what, Benson? You can have some extra shells. <laughs> oh, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got the Benson through blind fire at the very end. <laughs> that was great. 1567 base XP. I mean, it's a six versus six. It's, it's understandable. I absolutely demolished their battleships, though. Anyway, time for the next game. This time we're in a spooky aircraft carrier match. And it's spooky because we don't have a smokescreen. We don't really have a way to disengage from CV planes. So if the CV wants to sit on top of me, I'm going to have a very bad game. Especially because the anti-air on the ship, it just, it isn't great. The entire line doesn't have great... Then again, none of the destroyers other than a few exceptions have great anti-air. But I mean, hey, chances are that she won't target me. And if she does, well, somebody else is probably going to have a better game. Although there's no other destroyer in the match, so... The enemy Yorktown really should be targeting me. So, should I launch torpedoes? And guess where the enemy destroyer will be. Just like we did last time. <laughs> I mean, I do recommend trying to do that. But at this point, it's probably a little late. Then again, the destroyer is Akizuki, so... It might still work. I just don't know if she is anywhere near her. I mean, I know she's coming over here, but... Whether she's actually going to try to contest. Akizuki isn't exactly the type of destroyer to go and contest you. At least not directly. My concealment radius is covering... Oh, she's actually in the cap. So I actually know that she has to be somewhere over there. Because look, look how much my concealment circle is covering the cap zone. And I'm not spotted, so... Obviously she has to be somewhere over there. But I don't really know where, especially now that she left. It would be, I think, foolish to launch these torpedoes to try to fish her out. She definitely would not have fallen for the trick that I pulled with the tier 9 orage. Yeah, Akizuki is somewhere over there. Has to be. There, there's literally no other choice. I want to torp some battleships instead, so I'm just gonna push. If Akizuki pushed into us, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna push the other direction. Or maybe she's actually at B already. Could be. Hmm. Yeah, it would be very nice if those battleships pushed into these islands. I would able to set up some pretty effective torpedoes I think. Well at least the first set. After that the CV comes and spots me and I'm probably gonna die or something. But you know what? You only live once. And by this I don't mean that you need to YOLO rush and die. Okay? You can you can torpedo in a precarious position and still do okay. Where are you Trento? I want to stay away so you don't spot me. There you are. Oh, she's a little closer than I thought. I need this. Oh, no, I got spotted. That's not good. Because now I just blew my cover from this ambush. Didn't even fire at me. Maybe she didn't notice. Yeah, I, I, maybe she didn't notice. Dude, you need to pay a little more attention. <laughs> imagine, imagine eating three torpedoes from the front and knowing the destroyer was there just then. Man. Well, maybe next time Trenta will uh, do a little better. Indianapolis can have radar, but luckily she is somewhere else. She actually kept B. Can you believe that? A heavy cruiser went into the center of the map and capped it? Well, I guess if the Akizuki, the lazy destroyer, is being so lazy, then that's kind of what you have to do, isn't it? I'm glad the CV is busy somewhere else, though. Otherwise, my game wouldn't be nearly as fun. Oh, is that Brandenburg turning closer? Nah, she has to run, right? We might be able to tarp the Bayan, though. But Brandenburg's probably gonna run. Because, I mean, look, we're, I have a Renown, a Gokase, and a Zeten coming behind me. It's, uh, yeah, the, the Brandenburg probably... Unless the Bayern goes in, like, ham, like, really hard. I think only then would the Brandenburg actually turn around. 
especially with Isa sailing the completely wrong direction. Yeah, I think battleships are gonna be a little uh, scared of pushing. Wait, come on, I need 15 more seconds. I would have really liked to launch those torpedoes. Man, I wish I had taken the uh, torpedo reload skill. I really, really, really do recommend taking it. Come on. Oh. oh, maybe we can launch and buy from here. That would be fine too. Well, Bayan, I hope you enjoyed the express delivery of these torpedoes. They are very delicious for my damage counter. Wait, she only has 43,000 HP to boot? Well, the torpedoes look like they're missing. So I guess she's gonna be... Okay, wait, Bayan, what are you doing, buddy? Pal! <laughs> You know what? If, if you say that he's a paid actor, I think even I would believe that at this point. <laughs> nah, realistically, he's just new. He, he uh, reacted poorly, or maybe didn't even realize the torpedoes were there until it was already too late to make the turn. Okay, Isa actually turned around. She's coming in the correct direction this time. I'm surprised that. Isa is also... A plane ship, right? She could have come and spot me, but she didn't. Interesting. Well, better for me. Maybe we can even jump to Yorktown. Although, with my torpedoes only having 11 kilometers range, it's gonna be a little difficult. But maybe we can make it happen. Hey, planes are. Oh no, those are ESA planes. If you were that ESA, you should come spot the destroyer. That, that would be your primary focus. None of this other stuff trying to strike like a cruiser, forget that. Find the destroyer so that your friendly Brandenburg can just delete him. Okay, that probably wouldn't happen. I have 19,000 HP. But at least you would get a few shots off, and then next time you would get a few shots off, and then next time you would get a few shots off. And yeah, actually, maybe the game ends before you actually kill the DD that way. But if Yorktown helps you... They could do it. Here I make a bit of a mistake. See, <laughs> I think I have 12 kilometer torpedoes. <laughs> I just launched at the 11.5. Oh no. My only chance of hitting the Yorktown if, is if she sails forward towards the battleships on my team. <laughs> and I think that's just not going to happen. I'm not really sure why I feel that way, but it seems somewhat unlikely. But hey, um, they don't seem to know I'm here, so we can do it again. By the way, I almost got spotted by the Isa. I might actually get spotted because I'm going to run out of map. Although if she eats torpedoes like this, maybe not. Okay, the rest bypass the Isa, and the Yorktown is still stationary. Therefore, my torpedoes will run out of range right in front of the carrier. See? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it uh, really helps if you know what your torpedo range is. Well, Isa, now you see me, now you don't. I might as well just start shooting the Enterprise. I'm gonna try AP. It should technically work. I don't know, maybe, maybe HE would actually do more, I'm not sure. But then again, aircraft carriers have these extremely long damage control parties, so... I think AP might be a better choice, especially if I'm this close on the broad side of the carrier. I mean, that, that's pretty decent damage, 3k per salvo. I'm pretty happy. But the torpedoes are gonna finish her off. Goodbye, Enterprise. The adventurer wins again. And the CV is still completely uninterested in spotting me, which I guess makes sense at this point. There's nobody to actually take advantage of it. But still, feels a little weird when the CV ignores you, but I guess he did it at his own peril. Ooh, we even get to use our anti-air. Look at how impressive it is. We have done nothing to these fighter planes. Although, as I understand it, the support carrier fighter planes are much healthier than regular CV planes. 
But on the other hand, they don't spot. They only spot for like two kilometers or something. You have to be like directly underneath them to be able to be spotted by them. Because look, I get unspotted here while being basically in the center of the circle. Anyway, we don't really get to do anything because the game ends in, well, 30 seconds. A pretty nice game, 138k damage, sank three ships, kept the base solo, hit nine torpedoes. Although the enemy team really did help us with landing those torpedoes this time. They, uh, they definitely did not pay enough attention to the tarps. But 1915 base XP in a tier 6 to 8 battle, and not even a full battle. 101k damage from the nine torpedoes. Telling you, these torpedoes hit really hard. It's... They're great. They're just great. I'm telling you, for a tier 8 destroyer, L'Aventurier is pretty good. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.